Hello teachers, welcome back to Top Tier Teachers. I'm Lisa and this is how I start the second day of school. So once again, I position myself at the door. I have my clipboard with the roster. The students show me their schedule. No one comes into the room without me verifying that they actually belong there. Any student that ends up in the wrong class is a teacher problem and we want to keep students safe. So it's just really easy to have your clipboard, check their schedule, before they enter. As they enter, of course, you're greeting them and you want to start them immediately on the assignment. So my first day focus was like, you know, according to Harry Wong in his book, The First Days of School, he said, students have three questions. Who's this teacher? What is this class about? And who are the people in here with me? So I answered those questions in that order. On the first day of school, who is this teacher? And I share information about me personally. On the second day of school, I help them understand what is this course about? So I don't particularly get into the course, but what can they expect from me? And then on the third day, we do some type of textbook activity where I introduce them to the text according to the district's guideline. So for the second day this year, 2023, August, 2023, I've had this slide projected. I'm standing at the door. Now, of course, there are students who are already in and they are talking. And so I'm greeting and I'm like, oh gosh, these kids are starting the class. Not everyone. And so I knew when I came in, I was going to have my reinforcement, of course, for the students who are already on task. So I came in in one class period. And of course, I was putting a piece of candy out. Thank you for starting the class. Thank you for starting the class. I don't know their names yet. So the students who are not on task or who is standing up talking, I hold the kids at the door, excuse me, and I say, excuse me, read the board, start the class. So it's just really important that I teach them from the first day of school. They start the class. I don't. So however you choose to do that, follow through on that. For me, it is really important from day one Students understand they start the class, I don't. So as you can see here, this is the bell work. As soon as the bell rings, the tardy bell rings, I enter the room and I go into the crowd. I've already taken attendance at the door with my roster. Yes, I know administration is waiting on the load count, but I have to show these students I'm not going to go immediately to my desk. I will not go to the computer. I'm coming in. I go to each table. I go to each, if I have, I have tables this year, but I'll go to each row. When I had rows, I'm coming to each student and I'm checking to see if you are starting the assignment. If you are not, this is an opportunity for me to support you. How can I support you? Take a look at the board, do what it says. I don't like to talk at the beginning of class. I think teachers talk a lot. So I always wanted to be really clear you, what can you do? So here I say, okay, these students have to do five to 10 behaviors. I can always expect. So if somebody's stuck, it's the second day, they may be stuck. Like, what does she mean? And so I begin as I'm circulating, I will share some examples. I am always on time. I always bring my supplies. You'll never have to contact my parents. So I just begin to share examples. Once I see that everyone's writing, I input attendance quickly. It takes no more than one minute to input attendance so that I can get back into the crowd. So the focus, my focus the second day was how can you experience me? And so this is the slideshow that I use. Of course, it's a meeting. Classes are meetings. And so we should establish the norms. As soon as we get students finished with the bell work, especially at the beginning of the year. They don't know you. You're different from their second period teacher, the teacher they had last year. What are the norms? And yes, it might be the second day of school, but what do I do if I need to use the restroom? You haven't given me a pass yet. We don't have a system set up, but I got to go potty. So it's really important that as soon as they finish the bell work, the second day, first day, until they have a system established, they need to know the urgent things right away. So this is projecting, I go over and I tell them the norms before I start the class. We, um, the focus of the day is for them 
you know, their bail work was what can I expect from them? Now I'm going to spend class time sharing with them what they can expect from me now. It is an active listening activity. So what you do for active listening, you can do a couple of things. Because it's blah, 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 blah. Teachers are talking, and we know what is it. Eric Jansen in his book, Teaching with the Brain in Mind, movement is required. So there is no way we should require students to sit and listen, wah, 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 wah. No. So I explained to students, I say, I'm about to share information that you should know about me what can you expect from me so um, because it is extended information i'm going to have you move when i tell you to i want you to stand up put your pins down and i'm going to speak for two minutes so i use my phone and i time myself so i pull up two minutes and i press go and then i speak for two minutes the timer goes off i stop i tell the students Sit down, you have 30 seconds to record notes on what you remember. You may share with your table. And of course, they're, they're going to be able to use these notes on a quiz. So there will be like a syllabus, like a first day's quiz over all the information. And so we repeat 30 seconds and usually I give them 45 seconds. So at the end of 30 seconds, I say, if you haven't shared with the table, do so. You do not have to write in complete sentences. You are simply recording key ideas from my lecture. I don't lecture often, but anytime I do give information kids may consider boring, I never require them to sit and take notes. I always require, so even if you don't want them to stand up, you'll tell them, put your pencils down. I'm going to speak for two minutes and I gauge it based on the age level. If they're younger kids, you may have to chunk it even more, one minute, and then you may give them one minute to record. You see, so that's a variable. If it's high school, you can speak to juniors for three to four minutes, maybe even five, and then have them pick up their pen and record. So what this teaches them is in college, you know, if they're trying to type word for word what the college professor says, they'll be, they aren't actively listening. So it's best to listen to the college professor, grab key terms, and then record, okay? So this is what I teach them. We do an active listening. And so I just go through what is it that you can expect from Ms. Hightower? I just go through, I'm not going to share this with you to, for time, but I explain. And I want to pause here to say integrity is really big. I do an integrity lesson, you know, speech. Um, I tell them our entire society is built on integrity. I said my car is parked outside on the lot right now because I trust nobody's going to dent my door when they open it. I said when you go to get dinner, you trust nobody drops your burger on the floor to make your, and ooh, nobody's looking. I say so if, you know, you know you aren't supposed to be using your cell phones for personal reasons. If I have to step out, another teacher calls me out, you, ooh, Miss Hightower's not here. You, you just, you're honest. Our society operates on honesty, and I stress to them, I trust young people. I had, uh, when my children were teenagers, I didn't say, I need to check your Facebook. I need, no, I just trusted them. When I was married, um, I didn't, I need to show me a picture of where you are. No, you just, whatever's done in the dark comes to the light. I'm divorced. <laughs> That's another channel, okay? Anyway, so excellence, I talked to them that, you know, a pet peeve of mine is when you come in here and you try to um, be friends as far as, you know, you try to have your social hour. Learning is our focus. So, and I always do a little lesson about fake friends. If you'd like more information about that, just leave it in the comments. But don't come in here with your fake friends because I'll, I'll go over to you. If I see you talking to somebody, I'm like, do you know his birthday? Do you know his birthday? Do you know his mom's name? Are you all friends? Now I put them on the spot because they're like, but they're doing all this talking with each other. So if you're not really, because you can find the friends, the real friends, they go home and hop on a video game with each other so they don't have to try to get the friendship in during your class. So I let them know I expect, you're going to have to expect excellence from me. I expect excellence from you. And learning is going to take precedence. You just come in here, you need to play school. That's what you can expect. I'm going to expect you to play school. I, for, it's an English classroom. They taught you how to write complete sentences in the first grade. I am not going to grade your work. I'm going to give it back to you. So in order to meet the criteria for credit, 
you need to write a complete sentences. I tell them, you know, you're safe in this classroom. I explain to them my grading system. And, you know, especially, I say, raise your hand. You know, you've always been an A student. Sometimes we as teachers give A's away. I tell them if I expect you to go, I say, if I tell you right now to draw a picture of Mickey Mouse and you draw, everybody draws a picture of Mickey Mouse, even if it's a stick figure, that's a B. You met my expectations. But if you go home and you turn Mickey Mouse into a dance and animation, whoa, that is impressive. So I help them, help them see generally, yes, I have rubrics, but the big picture is A's are impressive. B, you did what I asked you to do. You know, if it's an essay and you wrote using grade level vocabulary, you met my expectations. But if I see you dropped in advanced words in your paper, now you're exceeding the teacher's expectations. That's pretty impressive. I explain to them they'll have choice grading in my class. Choice grading, I, you know, for the majority of part, you get to aim for an A on this, a B, and I establish the criteria for each of those. I do include a C or a D, but, you know, it's not something that they want to aim for. But I make sure as long as you complete the assignment, even if it's not A worthy or B worthy, you get to pass the class. It's my responsibility to structure the class, to give all students an opportunity to pass. Everyone may not be strong in math or strong in language arts, but they should have an opportunity to pass. And of course, it's standards based, but especially in middle school, they need to pass. I explained to them about my grading policy, uh, how they will experience me with feedback, the structure. They start the class, I end it. I will always, you know, teacher clarity, John Hattie spoke about how teachers are responsible for clarity, which leads to a successful classroom, and my directions are not suggestions. I This is in our school mascot. I had the school mascot there, and I tell them if the principal says you can't go to the restroom within the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes, I'm going to follow that. That's what you can expect from me. The principal says, Mark, you tardy. I'm going to do that. Uh, we ex we have, I let them know in this class we use a lot of technology. I communicate frequently. I will respond promptly to an email. Um, we will have rigor in this class. I don't give more work. We'll have little, but it may be uh, more rigorous. I communicate with your parents frequently, and I expect you to read every single day, even over winter break, no days off. This is the slideshow I use for the second day. And then after that, we will go into, or actually before, so where like the first day I come in and then I welcome them. After I get them started and take attendance, there's a welcome. And the second day I enter, go into the crowd, take attendance, and then um, I show them the norms. But what, what we do after, before we go into this lesson where I'm telling them what they can expect from me and they have to record notes, I do have a social activity. And so we did play the dice game as a social activity, but you can insert your own. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, it is my pleasure to support you, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you.